Welcome to Mobile RC. Today we're going to be building a 6x6 Valkyrie with rear steering. This kit is, uh, as far as I know, the only commercially available kit uh, you can purchase to turn a SCX24 into a 6x6. There is quite a few pieces. You can do it if you're a beginner or a novice. It's definitely possible. It's certainly not. Eh, well, maybe it is kind of simple. I don't know. It's not that hard. It's basically all bolt-on stuff. The hardest part is going to be building the body. And the reason I say that is you have to cut the body to install the Valkyrie plate. <clears throat> um, this one was actually, uh, this is actually an idea from... Devin Deaton. Devin Deaton had the idea for this leaving the side part on here. He, uh, this is actually his truck I'm building right now as an RTR for him or his wife. One of the two, I cannot remember. But uh, normally I would actually just cut this bed off completely and bolt it on. And he kind of wanted to do this little side part here. And he uh, sent me some pictures that were hand drawn, you know. <laughs> real professional looking stuff and uh, I was like yeah I got the gist of it decided yeah I'll give it a try for you so that is um, definitely what you can do with it you know if you decide to uh, to not just have a straight flat bed you can kind of do that little Baja style too um, on the 6x6 the kit you get it's going to come in a big bag like this full of a whole bunch of stuff and depending on what options you uh, you desire will be kind of what comes in the bag. Uh, for the most part, you're going to really want the flex blades with this kit, uh, which are these little things hanging off these axles here, these little parts where the shocks mount. And those actually rotate up and down, and they change the angle of the shock. Give you about another 10 millimeters of travel <clears throat> just from you know per side uh divided by two or whatever about five millimeters each plus the different angle gives you a little bit softer suspension to make it more uh, more length of travel the um the kit as you get it will come black and will look about like this you know, as far as the uh, just the 6x6 kit, uh, minus the links, I'll show you those. This is the block-off plate. This goes in the bed. Uh, once you cut the bed, this screws into it to support and brace the whole bed. Um, you'll drill a few holes. You can do, normally I just do two. One right about there, right where the door line meets the body line, is where you want to drill your first hole on each side. And that will get it lined up to where you can put that plate, screw it in, and then when you're looking at the back of it, once you cut the bed, you don't want to cut too much of the windshield off when you cut the bed because it's going to have to mount through the windshield as well. <clears throat> so kind of keep that in mind. Try to cut a little bit long on the bed and just tuck it under as you screw it together. That will give you a little bit more meat for everything to grab a hold of. Um, the stock roll bar. There's holes, mounting holes for the stock roll bar to mount right back into the bed. So once you get this plate on the inside, the block off plate in, you can drill these three holes here. Once you get these two and you bolt it in, you can drill these three holes through. As you're looking at from the rear, you can kind of see where you need to drill them to line it up. Uh, you'll want to use uh, probably a 1.4 or a 1.6. 1.8 millimeter drill bit, something around there. That should give you just about exactly what you're looking for as far as uh, the hole diameter. <clears throat> Same thing with the side ones. Um, the parts here are threaded, so you don't have to really worry about the bed hole being the same size. You can make it a little bit bigger and then thread right into the block off plate and the actual bed plate bolts into the 
the block off plate as well and kind of sandwiches the body in between there. Makes it real sturdy. So it's not all floppy or anything like that. I'm squeezing it right now and you can't really see anything happening. That is pretty much what you're going to have to do for the body. Normally, like I said, I would cut this off right here all the way up and just make a straight flat bed on it. But you can do this as well, and it does actually look pretty cool. So, um, you know, this will be the first one like that I've built uh, specifically for him because he wanted it like that. <clears throat> so the chassis parts here that you see in orange are what's going to come with the kit. Um, depending on if you order the screw, the stainless steel screw kit, you will either have the stainless steel screws or you won't. Um, the flex blades will come with the screws because the flex blades have to have a little bit longer screw in order to thread into here anyways. <coughs> so when you open your package of flex blades, which is going to look like this right here, when you open your package of flex blades, there is screws and instructions. The screws are taped to the instructions right here. And you get your little sticker pack, you get your flex blades, um, and a really nice Mylar bag. So. As you open that, that will have the instructions for the flex blades, which are, are super simple. You know, you basically just take your shock off, you screw the flex blade in, pointing forward, um, or basically away from the transmission. If it's behind the transmission, it points that way. If it's in front of the transmission, it points that way. Your shocks will mount into one of these two holes. If you're doing it on the front axle, you're probably going to have to use the front hole, the very first hole on the thing on the farthest out. If you're on the rear axle, you can kind of choose which hole you want to do. If you want a little bit straighter suspension or a little bit softer suspension there, you can choose which hole you want there. Um, the same thing with the rear steering axle. You'll probably have to use the very most forward hole on there. Just because of clearance of everything with this knuckle turning, it'll probably hit the shock when you do it. I've never even tried to install it in the hole there in the second hole. Um, so the kit, as it comes with all these little parts and bits and pieces, um, plus it will also come with some links that look kind of like this right here. Uh, if you get the rear steering, all four of the links will be the same length. If you don't get the rear steering, you'll have two, these are the same length too. You'll have two longer ones. The two longer ones will actually be the upper links. If you do not have the rear steering kit, they will go into the upper part here. And as these attach, this little guy you're going to need is going to be upside down. The upper links will attach in the middle here like so. And here, the outer links will attach here and here. Uh, this isn't exactly the best suspension geometry in the world, but it is the easiest way to make a six by six and it does work very well. Uh, the added benefits of it is it does travel a little bit side to side, uh, which could be corrected with a pan hard bar of some sort, but isn't really necessary um, because it's, the side to side movement is actually kind of nice because it helps the turning radius. As you start to turn, the axle will follow and go that way as you're turning, which actually helps out the turning radius. And there's still plenty of, of suspension travel in the rear um, and articulation. The things you will need <clears throat> to complete the kit. The kit will come with these two harnesses. One is a motor splitter. One is a servo splitter. Uh, the reason I did this and it comes with these two harnesses, um, if you don't have that, then you have to, you will have to have uh, a third channel remote and, uh, and receiver. Now the the remote receiver that comes with the SCX24 is a three channel remote. However, um, the channel three on it is like a push button left or right. And so you'd have to have two hands while you're driving this thing and it wouldn't work very well. Uh, if you use the splitters, you do have proportional steering in the rear just as well as the front. So when you turn a little bit to the right, everything will be opposite in the back. And the whole thing will kind of rotate like this. Uh, and, and that gives you a real good turning radius. You don't have the option to do like, uh, what do they call it? Uh, they 
crab walking or whatever, you know, where one turns one way and the other one turns the same way and you can kind of go this way. You don't have the option to do that, but it does do regular proportional steering this way. You probably could upgrade it and do something like that if you wanted, but it's really not necessary uh, for this little tiny rig. The drive shaft you're going to need if you're using the rear steering is going to be the deadbolt front drive shaft. Um, now what I just tell everyone, if you can find the axial kit, just buy the little axial drive shaft kit. Uh, and that way you don't have to worry about trying to source out a whole deadbolt drive shaft. Uh, if you're not using the rear steering, the drive shaft will be a little longer because the angles are different. Um, you'll probably be using the Jeep front drive shaft or the uh, or the C10 front drive shaft for the rear axle. But for the rear steering, you'll want the deadbolt one. And what I've done here, I've kind of uh, kind of pre-assembled this. Uh, the last video I tried to make of building one of these took like two hours, and when I was done, I was so disappointed with it I deleted it. Um, so. As I was trying to put it together, I was forgetting things and it was a pain in the butt. And it's really hard to work on camera in this little tiny box here. Um, you know, normally I'm like, I don't know, I'm getting old. So I got to get up close and stare at things as I'm screwing them in. <laughs> and so it's getting kind of hard for me to do that. <laughs> the, uh, the front and the rear arms, these are not the right rear arms. These are actually Valkyrie rear, rear arms. These are the Valkyrie rear arms that would go with the 4x4 version of this. If you had the 4x4 Valkyrie kit, which as you can see are very similar to the 6x6, which the, uh, the the first version of the 6x6 was just called the 6x6 kit. And then when I came up with the Valkyrie kit, uh, I used the Valkyrie design on the 6x6, which made it a lot nicer. Um, <clears throat> the Valkyrie kit is available through me as well. Any, any of these products I'm talking about, you can find on... Um, www.mofo.rc M-O-F-O-R-C dot com Most of them range uh, the, the regular suspension kits range from about 25 bucks, 20 bucks, 25 bucks a little mini bouncer kit I make um, like that. Those run from about 35 to, um, to about 50, 60 bucks depending on what upgrade you want uh, the Valkyrie kit kind of runs about 35 to 45 bucks, maybe 50 for something. If you if you wanted to get a full, you know, stainless steel screw kit as well, I, I am selling stainless steel screw kits with some of these. Um, I don't have them all updated on the website yet. Uh, kind of stay tuned for that. Uh, the stainless steel screw kits will probably be about six or seven bucks per kit, depending on which kit it is and how many screws there are. Uh, it's really hard to find these stinking screws. <clears throat> the, the screws themselves being 1.4 millimeter diameter or M1.4 and, uh, and and the main lengths that I get I don't even worry about the point the, the five millimeter ones the stock ones that come in here in in almost every screw in here is that little bitty guy which is a five millimeter screw so what I do with with my screw when I order them I order the 1.4 by six which gives you a little bit more grab on everything. The other two major screw sizes you'll want are going to be the M1.4 by 8 millimeter and the M1.4 by 10 millimeter. 1.4 by 10s are the ones that go into the skid plate for the links. The 1.4 by 8s are the ones that go into the axles for the links. Uh, and you can see this rear steering kit is a four link now, not a three link. But the screws that go through here are 1.4 by eight, which I, I think are the only place on this car, that on this rigs, that use the 1.4 by eight. When you screw these links on, uh, this, this whole little setup here, gosh, let me just tell you a little bit about this rear steering. So you can see, here's the rear steering setup. It definitely looks a little different than a normal front steering setup, doesn't it? Here's a front steering setup. 
that's the front steering setup. Here's a rear steering setup. So the main difference is being a brand new whole link, redesigned front steering cross link, a brand new link here running from the servo down to the cross link, a two point mount here. You'll reuse your ball that comes out of the original link. You'll put it here on this link here. Let me show you. You'll put the original ball that comes out of your link on the outermost hole to the left. If you're, if you're holding the car from the front, looking towards the back. So it'll be on the passenger side. Your, your little ball is going to go in there now. This, you're going to need a 1.4 by 8 millimeter core. That screw that goes through there is going to stabilize this whole link assembly because it's so stinking long. Uh, what I have to do, and what you'll have to do, when you build this rear steering axle, you will take off your servo. Then you will flip the servo upside down so that that little arm is now on the driver's side as shown here and you will take the ball out of the back of the servo and move it to the front of the servo kind of hard to focus on that you'll move the little ball out to the front the new servo mount which comes with this rear steering kit looks about like this Flip it over, you see all you got. You got all your original mounting holes here. Plus, you have a four link set up here instead of the single center link for three link. This screws right onto the servo, uh, onto the axle. I mean, right here. Once you take this original mount off, it screws onto there. Before you do that, you're going to want to put these little blocks on. These blocks are adjustable, so you could actually move it forward or backwards on this mount. You can have it here. Or you can have it here. Or if you really needed to, you could just put one screw in and move it way far forward or way far backward and then screw the servo into it and that should lock it all in place just fine. Um, <clears throat> when you're installing this little plate onto the axle, just go ahead and take the whole steering linkage off here. You know, these come out, you just kind of shove on them really hard until they pop off. You know, you can kind of bend it and pop. And they'll come right out of there. Same thing with this one over here. You can kind of twist it and bend it. And it'll pop eventually. And come right off of there. It's probably easier to take it off of the servo first. Let me try that. There we go. Pop all that off like so. You'll take the whole servo mount off. You can take the servo off, servo mount off. You'll put the new one back on in its place. This part facing towards the back, just like original here. Oops, gosh, I'm not even on the camera. Sorry about that. We'll put it facing right here, just like the back, like that, just like this one is. We'll screw that in, just like this one comes off behind the first hole and behind the second hole is where these first and second slots are going to go, just like it came off. When you start to mount all these little rods after you get them all off, the original ones, uh, and a, a real quick demonstration. The stock ones that come on the axial are uh, some kind of a nylon. It's very flexible, very what you would call durable in the uh, plastic world. Not very tough, or I guess you can call it tough, not very strong, you know, as far as like snapping. Uh, it'll never snap. You'd be really hard pressed to make this thing snap. Uh, but they do give. So when you turn, if you get in a bind, they'll bend and give. Um, the, the plastics I use are ABS plastic, and they're probably five or six times harder than whatever this nylon mix they use are. So they don't bend and, and give and give all that slop like the stock one does. These will snap. And let's see if let's see how much it takes to make them snap. Let's see if I can make either one of them snap. Okay, stock axial one, you can fold right up into a pretzel. See that? Right up into a pretzel. Let's see if I can do that with mine. It's going to take probably 10 times more force to do this. Ugh. There, boom, snapped. You see how much force that took? This little SCX24 would never, 
ever be able to snap that. And you're going to get a much stiffer steering out of this because of the fact that this is so much stiffer than that other flimsy one is. Look, it's still bent. Look at that. These parts will break, but they are very, very strong. Um, even the... Uh, Oh gosh, let me grab one of my little mini, mini bouncer chassis, the ones I don't need. I've got a whole pile of V2 mini chassis. Let me find one. So here's the uh, here's a V2 mini mini bouncer chassis. This is the V2. I don't need these anymore because I'm onto the V3. So I'll just show you, uh, PLA, if this was PLA plastic, you could bend it about that far and the whole thing would break in half. It'd snap, and it'd break right in half. Uh, the, the material I use is ABS, and I use it because it's super bendable and tough. Kind of like nylon, it takes a whole lot to bend until it finally breaks. So this little thing here on an SCX24, you will never break this rolling off a hill or anything it takes a ton of force to finally snap it so these things like if you ever seen my little test video i've thrown them up in the air like 15 feet and they'll hit the ground and just bounce so you'll be really hard pressed to break any of these parts sorry i keep getting off topic back to the rig here the little transmission part uh, as far as the parts you'll need, you will need one whole front axle or rear axle, depending on if you're doing rear steering. Uh, you won't need the linkage, but you'll definitely need all the little balls and everything, and the shocks and the servo. You'll also need one whole motor, transmission, skid plate for either the 6x6 rear steering or non-rear steering. You're going to need one of these. The third and final thing you'll need is that drive shaft, which is either going to be for rear steering, uh, the deadbolt front drive shaft, or not rear steering, I believe it's the Jeep front drive shaft. So let me get this stuff kind of out of the way here, so we can actually focus on putting this together now. I think I've talked enough about everything else. You'll also need two extra tires. Maybe three if you want to put a spare tire on here. And it's really easy to put a spare tire on here. So to put a spare tire on this, what you do is you set the tire here in the middle. You get a three millimeter drill bit. You push it through this hole. You drill a hole, or maybe it was called a one eighth or seven sixty fourths. You drill a hole straight through. Well, it's not on the car because if you drill it while it's on the car, you'll go right through the battery if you got a battery in it. Drill it right through, and you get one long three millimeter screw. You come up from the bottom. You put a nut on the end of it, and then you got a spare tire mounted on here. Real cool extra little look there. Let me kind of clean this up a little bit so we can finish putting this thing together. The kit will also come with two 3mm M3 by 12mm screws, which are going to go into the back of the Valkyrie bed. They will thread into that and allow you to mount the bed just like the original, where it will hinge up. So you can get to all your stuff underneath. Anything you need is going to hinge right up. So let me talk a little bit about this installation real quick of these parts. Uh, the front shock towers are the exact same front shock towers that you would get if you bought the suspension upgrade for the Jeep, or for the C10, or for the Valkyrie, or for the 6x6. Uh, they give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 shock mounting points you can, you can use. Plus, with the addition of the flex blades, you get an extra mount here. So you can mount, you know, a total of like 13 different combinations here of spots you can put it. You take the flex blade off and put it there, too. You, know, you get a whole bunch of extra points you can mount it at. Yes, Trevor, I'm making a video. Okay. Uh, the rear ones... You get the same thing, you get a whole pile. You get 12, 15 different mounting positions here. And on the very last axle, you get eight. So there's a couple crossbars that will come with the kit. <coughs> you will need two crossbars. 
and you honestly don't even need them, but uh, they're good just for support. One here, one here. The reason how you know where they go, there's a chamfered hole there. There's a chamfered hole there. This chamfered hole is going to screw to this transmission. When you flip this upside down, it's going to screw just like so inside the frame rail here. You're going to screw it into the center hole here. Not, not where the lower link would go, but in the center mounting hole. And then same thing for this front hole. It'll line right up in the frame and line up with those two holes there. Not the very last one, but the second one over, I believe. Yes, second hole. Second hole from the back is where this transmission skid plate is going to mount into. Let's see if you can see it a little better. So we go into the second hole from the back. Not the bumper hole, but the second hole. And then it's going to line up with this hole here. And that's where you're going to screw those in at. Uh, what you'll do before you install this is you're going to screw the links into the back, line up your drive shaft if you can, and then slide it in and then screw it in. But the one thing you'll have to do before that is cut these little nipples off your skid plate that's on here. If you use a nasty razor, razor blade like this one, you use a big rusty one. That way, if you cut yourself, you might end up with tetanus. Or you can get a clean one and not kill yourself. I'll take my chances with the rusty one. So what we're going to do now is we're going to screw all these links into just where they line up here. There's not a whole lot of brain surgery that goes on here. You just basically, once you get the links on here, you set it on here, they line up with holes, you put the screws in and these are going to be those really long screws you're going to need um, 1.4 by 10 millimeter screws for that so since I didn't grab any let me go find some you'll need four of those there's four <clears throat> So I'm going to do this while it's in here before I put it in the truck. But what I'm going to do with these wires here. So I got these wires hanging out here. These are going to get in the way of that rear link. So what I will do with these, we'll fold them over just like so. Being careful not to break anything. Actually, I think I folded them. Yeah, here we go. That'll work. I don't know. I folded them the wrong way. Or did I? No. Okay. Go like this. Make it a pretzel loop. Go underneath this link here, then fold them. Just like that. Shove those right through the middle here. They go right underneath the motor and point forward. <clears throat> that gets these out of the way of this, uh, this link mount here. So before you install that, do that. Before you install this or this, what you want to do is take these two wiring harness kits that come with the kit. This one, you're going to unplug your front steering servo. You're going to slide this one right where that came out of. Shove it in there. You're going to take and you're going to jam these wires underneath. Through all this stuff, kind of back in the side. Only one of them has to go to the back. So we're just going to move one of them to the back. Pull it through. <clears throat> this front one you can go ahead and plug into your front servo. Just like that. Then we're going to keep shoving this back. I like to go kind of right in between the transmission and the battery plate. And I also like to go right under the battery strap. Just like that. Then you can kind of pull this taunt a little more. Give yourself a little clearance. You can figure out your exacts when you're done. And give it you know, a little looser here, a little tighter there, whatever. But let's just get that back as far as we can for now, sticking out of the back. And you're going to do the same thing <clears throat> with the motor harness. You're going to unplug your 
original motor wire there. We're going to plug in this Y harness. Just like so. The front motor will plug into the short Y harness. And you're going to take and you're going to shove this wire wherever you can stuff it under here. Just the same like we did earlier with that steering servo wire. Get these out of the way, shove that through. Grab it if you can. And give it a tug. Just like that. Gosh, I hope this made I hope it made this one long enough. You can kind of fit these wires under here wherever, you know, get them out of the way a little, make it a little cleaner looking. Why not make your car pretty at the same time, huh? That's pretty good. I hope that's long enough. I think it might be. <clears throat> now that I got those wires back there, uh, and I've got my four screws I need here that I keep forgetting to screw in, I'm going to go ahead and try to line this drive shaft up. And what I'll do, even though it's not necessary, is I'll try to time the drive shaft. And when I say that, I mean just line the stinking thing up together to where the two flat ends on the drive shaft are pointing the same like a straight line see that looks kind of like a straight line and I'll point to it let me find a little tool here see that flat part here and that flat part here you want those to be pointing in the same spline direction. That is called phasing a drive shaft. And uh, on a bigger rig, that would stop it from having vibration. On a little rig like this, you probably never know the difference. But why not make a good habit out of doing it anyways? I'm gonna pick up one of these 1.4 by 10s and see if I can't screw some of these links in without yanking my drive shaft back out and having to start over there. And these holes should be reamed already by the time you get the kit. So all you'll have to do is slide the screw through and tighten it up. If they're not, I'm sorry, I forgot. I am one man at the moment. But there's big things happening here. Uh, let's see. Let's get this other upper link on. I should have probably pulled that out of the way before I put that one on. There we go. Ugh, blasted. You know the worst part about making a, a YouTube or a Facebook video is now the music that I have to listen to while doing it. You try to listen to something good and Facebook and YouTube will both delete the video because you didn't pay for the rights to that song you were listening to. So you got to go on YouTube or somewhere else find unlicensed music and then you're stuck listening to it for a whole hour because you don't want to do this without listening to music because go nuts you're stuck listening to something you have no clue what it is just because Facebook and YouTube suck oh I didn't mean to say that out loud thought I was thinking that in my head <clears throat> and when you screw these in, don't tighten them too much. You know, just kind of get them to where they start feeling tight and you don't have a bunch of loose stuff anymore. That way you still get a, just a little bit of movement here. You also get your kind of flexible here, whatever, call it an articulation of mobile stuff. Set that there and... Let's go ahead and... Oh, dude, 
Dang it. My drive shaft popped out. There we go. Pop all that back together. <clears throat> We're going to slide this right into that frame rail now. And uh, what I'm going to do before I do that is plug these wires in. There's one. There's the other. And now I'm going to go ahead and slide this into there, right into the frame channel on both sides, preferably. There we go. And I'm going to line up these holes. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use a couple of my trusty 1.4 by 6 millimeter screws to screw this thing on. Uh, I would think it probably doesn't matter which, which, well, you know what I'm going to do first? Actually, I'm going to pull that back out. I'm going to run this servo wire the same place I ran that motor wire because I don't want it hanging outside of the frame the whole time. There we go. That's better. Now we'll try to plug that back in. There. Now we'll slide that back through there. <clears throat> this little hole that you want to mount it to is going to go into the second hole on the frame from the back. So I've got that mostly lined up. Let me find my screw again. See if I can't get that in that hole right there. And I'm trying not to touch any of these orange pieces while I'm doing this because they are still tacky. The paint is still drying. And if you notice, when this is in, look at that perfect clearance there. It's like it was made for this. I mean, that little axle just completely misses it by about a millimeter and a half. It's like this was just designed for me to find it and figure that out. I'll go ahead and go to the other side and put this screw in the same position, the second one from the back on the frame, going into the second hole in the skid plate, not the link hole, the mounting hole. <clears throat> I'm going to take one more of these 1.4 by 6 millimeter screws. I'm going to put it in this little back part here, right into the skid plate. Another inner mounting hole, not a link hole. If I can get it lined up right. go. Of course, I'm sticking my greasy fingers all over this brand new painted chassis parts again. This is going to help brace that whole skid plate motor assembly from the front and the back through both a metal chassis and a giant plastic arm. See if I can't line this one up now. There we go. That was easy. And, and the reason I like painting these things orange or yellow or red makes it so much easier to see on video. They do come in black. Uh, when, you, when you order something from me, it's going to be black. Unless you specifically send me a message and say, I want it whatever color you choose. And then I'll tell you how many millions of dollars extra it is to get that color you chose. And uh, the reason the reason I do have a charge for painting them, it's not just the time to paint them. Um, 
I have to spend about another 15 to 20 minutes wrapping each piece, or, you know, not each piece, but probably the whole setup. I gotta spend another 15 to 20 minutes to wrap all of this stuff when it's painted, and I have to put a little bag like this. I gotta wrap it in butcher paper, which is kind of like wax paper, to tape each piece up individually so they don't touch anything else in there and tear the paint off when it's being shipped to you. So I would definitely prefer you just paint it yourself. Uh, I wouldn't even want to make the extra five or ten bucks I get from painting them, honestly. I'd rather you do it, and I don't have to worry about it. Let me get the rest of this junk out of the way here so I know what I'm doing. All these extra bits and pieces I pulled out to show y'all. Let me just move them out of the way a little. <clears throat> and I'm going to go blow my nose because I live in Cedar Park, Texas, and the... Uh, and the allergies here are terrible. So I'm gonna go find me a Kleenex and I'll be back in about two minutes if you don't mind. better. So they call Cedar Park Cedar Park because it is full of cedar. Cedar was not originally in America. I think it came from Spain. Spain or somewhere like that, whenever the Spaniards were coming over and, I don't know, giving typhoid fever or whatever to the Indians. Apparently there was some bird shit with the cedar seed on it and it fell in, in America and next thing you know we got cedar everywhere. So back to the task at hand. Now I have six shocks I'm going to install on this thing because I think everything else is installed. And you see that cool little rocking motion that back end does? <laughs> you, you probably wouldn't desire that on a full size 6x6 but it actually really works great on this because now when you're going up hills look at that it actually stays in one place or moves and when you're going down hills it gets in closer so you actually get a better approach and deproach angle which is very strange that wasn't something I designed into this it just kind of happened naturally This kit, uh, the basic price for this kit without rear steering, uh, <clears throat> I believe it's 55. You have to check my website, www.mofoRC.com. I believe the basic price is 55. The rear steering kit price is 65. And uh, if you wanted things like stainless steel screws or uh, painted or extra option upgrades. I'll be adding those as I can as I get time. Right now I've spent every waking hour just fulfilling everybody's orders in a somewhat timely manner. So what I'm going to do with these shocks, I'm going to point the front ones like that because that's how I like to print the front ones. So I'll go ahead and install the bottom first, then I can kind of find my mounting point that I want to use for the top. And when you install these, kind of get that little C-hub out of the way first. Put it right into that front hole to start turning your driver. You can snug these up. It's not an issue. When you put the flex blade on, you don't want to snug them up. When you put your flex blade on, <clears throat> this little orange piece here on the axle, you will, if you snug it up, loosen it a little until the whole thing moves freely up and down, just like this. You see that? Let me get a little closer again here. You want that flex blade to 
be able to travel. Dang it, I keep smashing it. Up and down freely. Just like that. On all of your axles. Now what I like to do with Oh dang stupid garage shaft puffs out again. Here we go. What I like to do with the shocks, I like to give them a little bit of angle, but not too much. The more angle you give it, the more flexibility it's going to have, but at the same time, it's going to be really soft, and your ground clearance is going to drop. So I'm going to go right about... I'm just going to go right in the middle here. That looks pretty good. The very middle hole looks pretty good to me. <clears throat> when you Before you put these screws in, check for clearance behind them. Uh, some of these holes... You can kind of see, let me grab something to show you a little picture of here. Let me show you. So you got this thing here. You got your ESC tray with your shock mount, with your, your body post mount. And then you've got something like this that's going to screw onto it. And it's going to screw on at that battery mount point, and it's going to screw on here. And you see how some of these holes behind them, you have a shock tower. You have a bunch of crap in the way. So on the, on the back side, you got plenty of clearance there. But on the front side, you might run into these shock towers with the screw if you're trying to find a particular hole you want. What you can do is you can basically, A, you can get that tiny little 1.4 or 1.2 millimeter drill bit, and you can drill right through into the shock tower wherever you want to mount it. Or B, you can get like a pair of dikes or a Dremel and just hack this whole piece right here off. Because you're not going to need any of this anymore. This doesn't do anything anymore. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. Go ahead and put this screw right in that hole. And start turning. Since there's nothing in the way here, I'm just going to tighten it until it kind of snugs, like so. Bring this up. I'm going to put it right back in that middle hole. <clears throat> and there is a little bit of clearance interference in this middle hole. So I'm just going to, oh, the third option you can do, I'm just going to tighten these in. But I'm not going to go all the way snug. As soon as I see it looks like this piece might be bending out. I'm just going to stop right there. There's plenty of grip and plenty of thread already in there. It's already sticking out of the back side, so it's not going to come out. Got our front ones mounted. We'll go to the middle. And on the back, I just like to kind of do all facing backwards. So we'll start at the bottom again. And when I say facing backwards, I mean the uh, the fake reservoir. Why do I do that? I don't know. It's just what I like to do. Concentric, I guess. Or linear, or I don't know, something. Back in there, and I'm going to find my sweet spot. I think is going to be right about, uh, let's go, let's go here, uh, let's go there. I'm going to do the second hole from the middle up, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And there is no interference with that screw hole. So this one faces backwards on the other side. Then put the bottom in first. <clears throat> we almost have a six by six. I'll have to try and find a charged battery to put in this so I can show you it. Here. 
I went second hole forward from the middle, right there. You can adjust these later, however you like. You can move them around, find the perfect amount of flex, perfect amount of travel, perfect amount of whatever you're looking for. Now we do the rear. And we're going to point the rear one reservoir, the rear reservoir, towards the rear of the vehicle again. I'm off camera again. I need to move this camera up a little higher so you can get a better view. That or maybe buy like two or three more cameras. I don't know. So you can have multiple views. That might be a little nicer, huh? And the upper one. Let's see. Let's go about... Mm, let's make the rear kind of soft. Let's try the very forward hole. No, let's try one back and up. Or down. Let's try one back and down. One back from the front and down. The more straight you mount these, the higher ground clearance you'll have. And the less amount of suspension travel you'll have. The more forward you mount them, the lower you'll have with lower center of gravity and more suspension travel because of a softer suspension. Sorry, I'm off camera again. Let me put this one in there. <clears throat> uh, what I didn't say earlier. So if you're watching this because you're building one of these kits, I sure hope you watch it till the very end. What I didn't say earlier, what I completely forgot about, my steering links, when you install them, you got this one and this one. You've got your one rounded post ball end is gonna go here. Your one screw eight millimeters long is gonna go there, 1.4. These ball ends, though, when you go to install these ball ends, <coughs> what you'll have to do when you put it on, just like I'm going to show you right now, you shove that little sucker in the hole until it snaps on, and you'll see how tight that is. You see how tight that sucker is? That's going to make your steering really tight because my hole tolerances are close. I don't want to make them any bigger because I don't want to have too big of a hole tolerance. So what you can do, once you snap that in, if it's tight like this, if it doesn't move mostly freely, when you go to turn, you feel resistance, your servo is going to feel a resistance. It's going to overheat and burn out too fast. What you can do is you can take a heat gun or a hairdryer or a lighter. If you use a lighter, be very careful. Don't do this very long. Heat it up for just about three, four seconds, and then just move it around a little like so. Just wiggle it up and down and left and right. Don't push it off the post when you're doing this because you'll ruin it. Now it's quite a bit smoother already. Steering's a whole lot easier. Might have to heat it up a little bit more. I'm not gonna do this ahead of time because I don't know how your link is going to be and I don't want to ruin it for you. And so do it yourself. I can't do everything for you. Yeah, this is real nice and, and just perfect. Now look at that. Can you see that? That's perfect. You want it to move kind of sort of freely on its own like that. And now when this cools down, it'll harden back up and it'll maintain that position of easy motion. And it's still not going to pop right off. It's still on there real nice and strong. It's not going to snap off when you turn the steering wheel. 
So now you have a lot less tension on your steering servo when it's turning, and you're not going to wear that servo out as fast. I forgot to mention that earlier, so I sure hope if you're building one of these, you pay the attention till the end. <clears throat> All right. Put this shock in. We're going to go to the same hole we were at on that side, right there. So used to working on one tenth scale stuff. These tiny little screws are killing me. I might even have to move these up a little bit, loosen them a little. I don't know. Let's see. Oh, their switch feels pretty good. Let me find out what happened to my terrible music. Hang on a second. my terrible music has left the building. There it is. All right, so electronics are all hooked up. Oh, we got an act, great. Electronics are all hooked up and shocks are all hooked up. Got that gorgeous orange color looking all over the frame here. By the way, Real quick, let me just show you something else. I make these suspension upgrades for every single model of the SCX24. So here's a Jeep, a stock Jeep, with suspension upgrades, and flex plates. You know what this sets you back? 27 bucks shipped to you. And you'll get at least an extra 10 millimeters of flex without having to spend a bajillion dollars on shocks and longer links and high clearance things and this and that and all that other garbage. There's one for the Jeep. Here's a deadbolt. Same pop it open bam gorgeous looking suspension upgrade you can cover it whatever color you want it's abs plastic it's paintable same thing with the flex plates you can paint them whatever color you want or you can leave them all black just the way they come and you get a whole crap pile of extra mounting locations for your suspension and if you do want bigger shocks boom put them on there get more suspension and more flex all at the same time same thing what do we got here Betty. Pop. Oof, look at that. Same thing for the Betty. Boom. Blades. Suspension upgrade. Look at that. All right, back to work. Now we'll go ahead and put the tires on, eh? How does that sound? Because we're getting very close to done. And this can be one of the hardest parts of the whole job, getting these tiny nuts on. When you put these little tiny nuts back on, don't crank them down, okay? If you get to the point where the nut stops and you see how tight this tire is right now, you've put it on too tight, loosen it a little bit. You want this to be floppy, just like that. See that? I hope you can see that through the camera. You want it to move freely. This is not a, uh, this one particular, a stock, the stock SCX24 is all right. They're not high performance machines and you're not going to strip the plastic hex out unless you jam an 8,500 KV motor in this thing or something crazy like that. And if you over tighten these, then your stupid hex gets stuck in the, stuck in the wheel. Every time you take your wheel off, your hex comes off with it. And that little cross pin that goes through there falls out in the dirt. And then you're left with a three-wheel drive. So don't over-tighten these if you can avoid it. It's already over-tightened. The first time you over-tighten it, they're, they're ruined. So you already over-tightened it. 
Well, maybe next time, try not to. Now that you know. Now that someone has formally told you, don't over tighten your nuts. Of course, I'm missing a nut now. So I'll have to rob one from something else. Ugh. Can't stand putting these little nuts on. If there's a better way of doing this, somebody let me know in the comments. I always seem to lose these little nuts trying to put them on. Look at that. I got three on, four on with no problem. Number five. I cannot get on. All right, I need one more nut. Where'd he go? There it is. I actually found it. You're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Almost done. Uh, also, if you enjoy my work, please consider subscribing here, going onto Facebook, liking my page, maybe even sharing something I've done and telling some fools about it. <coughs> because I can't continue doing this without support. I do have two small businesses now that I own. This one and my main business, which is very quickly becoming not my main business, which as fast as this has been picking up. I'm going to go ahead and screw the body on. Right through here, into there. When you tighten these up, uh, you can snug one side first and it won't really matter it's gonna suck up the slack when you put the other side on so I'm gonna leave about 174 hundredth of a millimeter slack in there I'm just kidding I don't know just don't crank it too tight you can adjust it later on however tight you want the body to open and stay open or not stay open so right now when I open this look at that it stays open I like that I like it just like that crank it open it stays open you can show off a little bit look at how pretty these little parts are in here you can say that if not out loud at least to yourself you can slam your little hood back down and boom. We've got a gorgeous little 6x6 six six with rear steering. Look at that. Let's see if we can find a battery. Give me just a moment to search for a battery and the remote for this thing. battery and I found 
found what I think is the remote. <clears throat> Let's try it out. So now when I put this battery back in, it's probably not going to fit because i got all those wires crammed underneath there. I don't like to open a strap all the time. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Go ahead and make sure that's off. Plug this in. Go ahead and turn my controller on. Hopefully I got the right controller because i got like 17 controllers laying around here. Turn that on. Oh. Yeah, here we go. So we shut the lid. Yeah, close enough. All right, let's get there with that later. All right, where's my adjustments at? Seems like I'm binding a little bit in the back here. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, just a little. You see how that servo doesn't want to return to center? If I turn to the right, it comes right back. If I turn to the left, it doesn't want to come all the way back. So what I'm going to try for troubleshooting is first loosening this little screw here. Just a hair, see if that helps. No, it does not. So one of these joints is still a little bit tight. And I'm going to have to go back and heat them up, figure out which one is tight. But just for demonstration's sake, so you don't have to watch me heating stuff up again, let's set this here on some little stand. And look, proportional rear and front steering and uh oh we're on the tape roll maybe find a smaller tape roll let's see what i can devise here real quick i guess i should probably 3d print a little stand huh that might be smart And the turning radius probably better than the stock SCX24. All that in one hour and uh, I'll say 30, 45 minutes. Probably only an hour if I wasn't talking the whole time. That's her right there. All finished and completed. And now you can actually just do your little tuning and testing. Figure out what settings work best for everything. You can straighten out your servos just the way you would with your steering trim. You don't have any extra channels or any extra garbage you have to worry about or binding or anything like that. You just set it, forget it, and go have some fun. I hope you all enjoyed the video. I know I always enjoy making them. Even though I'm terrible at it. Thank you for watching. And good night.